Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Healing and Freedom Journey. I am Mark DeJesus, your brother from another mother, bringing you insights along this journey. I'm all about mental, emotional, and yes, relationship health. And if you are too, then you've come to a great place place. Let's talk about intrusive thoughts. I've documented a lot of this in my book, The OCD Healing Journey, which is available now. But today, what I want to do is I want to talk about four things that you need to know when it comes to your intrusive thoughts you're having. These are good reminders. Again, I go much deeper into the nuts and bolts of the journey. Intrusive thoughts, these thoughts, they seem to come out of nowhere right? And we're like, what's happening? Why are these thoughts even here? Why am I having them? What's going on? They disturb you. They create a lot of torment, anxiety, maybe guilt, conflict within you. You start to get flustered. You lose your peace. What's going on here? Well, these are just some reminders. I want to help you as your brother from another mother to help you navigate this because without some perspective, these thoughts that feel like crazy thoughts can get us all squirrely inside and we can really go down some really discouraging and depressing and panic fear ridden areas. So these are just some reminders for you. Again, I want to encourage you to get a copy of the book. I'm also teaching on this book in the, OC, uh, the, I'm sorry, the healing and freedom community. I'm teaching on the OCD healing journey. You can check out that link right there, markdacius.com community, if you want to go deeper, but you're going to get some great stuff right here. First thing I want to remember, remind you of is when it comes to these intrusive thoughts, they target your values. They target subjects that are important to you. This is something that you always have to remember. Usually when they hit, you have strong values. You actually have values that you want to have integrity. You want to do what's right. But those values are under pressure. They are under the force of fear. And they are under the influence of the opposite, actually, of what you value. Okay, so for example, if you have if you're sitting there cutting uh, your 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 meal, preparing meal for your family, and you have an intrusive thought of stabbing a family member or stabbing someone with a knife, it's not that you are a murderer because that's what the thought seems to portray. It's that you actually value the people around you, but that value has been wrapped with pressure and fear, so it gives room for these self sabotaging thoughts to rise up. So you have these sexual intrusive thoughts. It's, you value sexual purity. You have a thought that uh, compromises your integrity because you value integrity. Uh, you have deep thoughts about existential kind of thoughts and things like that because you value your life and your existence and value where your place is in life and God's relation to that. You value truth or you value righteousness or you value holiness. You value your relationship with God and your standing with God. So maybe it targets salvation. It targets uh, your sense of righteousness or repentance or you value marriage, but there's a pressurized thing of, oh no, I better make sure I marry the right person. I better be with the right person. The list goes on and on. Whatever you spin about, it's targeting something that you actually value, but that value has become pressurized. So therefore, it loses its context, it loses its perspective, it loses its place in your life. Therefore, it becomes obsessive. Second thing, this leads into the second thing you're going to need to understand. And that is, and this is really what it's about. It's not that you want this thought or this thought is something that's about you. It's actually you're afraid of the thought. So again, going back to the knife scenario, it's not that you want to murder somebody. It's that you're actually afraid of a worst case scenario kind of situation. So the thought targets what you value. It targets it in a fear way, worst case scenario. And usually it's where the stakes are the highest. So it's not that you have a knife and you accidentally uh, put a little nick in somebody. No, it, it's all the way to murder. <laughs> okay. So if it's a sexually intrusive thought, it's all the way to worst case scenario of whatever value systems that, 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 that you have that have become pressurized. Am I making sense? And so it's really about what you fear the most. It's, it's a fear issue and it's worst case scenarios. So we end up feeding what we fear we, we, we feed it by compulsively avoiding it. I, I don't want to get anywhere near that kind of situation because then that thought's going to rise up. 
And we also fall into compulsive patterns of always trying to fix it or bring relief or appease whatever the thought is saying so it doesn't bother us anymore, hoping it'll just go, go away and leave us alone. A lot of it brings out our punishment-based relationship with God, a punishment-based relationship we have with ourselves, and even our perfectionistic pressure, very consequence-driven life, and the world of what if surrounds us. And so if you have obsessive compulsive issues, you have battles with intrusive thoughts, one of the first things you're going to have to learn is how to relate differently to fear. And in my journey, this was one of the first areas because the way I dealt with fear was not healthy. It was not helpful. It was very distorted. In fact, a lot of my fear thoughts, I thought there was God speaking. Uh, I, I served and obeyed most of the fear that came into my thoughts. And I was afraid of the thoughts and that propelled a lot of my behavior and a lot of my action. And we have to actually change how we relate to anxiety, how we relate to fear, how we relate to worry, because most of us, when fear arrives, we feed it. And we're going to have to learn to make a shift. And these intrusive thoughts are telling us we're going to have to learn how to no longer be afraid of this thought because fear is what inflames the thought and makes it bigger. And then we run and hide and God, take the thought away. Why won't these thoughts go away? And that's not the approach. We actually have to move through them and not feeding the fear. And this takes practice. So you have to remember, it's really about these thoughts target what frightens you. It tar targets disturbance at a high level. Worst case scenario where the stakes are high. The third thing I want to remind you of is they often, they often arrive at relationship connection moments. What do I mean by this? Well, they often sabotage relational growth, relational connection, relational depth, and meaningful connection in a variety of ways. So you sit down, you try to pray intrusive thoughts. You sit down in church you, or you stand up in church or you try to connect to worship. You try to connect to prayer. You try to connect to reading the Bible. You try to connect to peace. So in moments of trying to relate to God, in moments of trying to relate to special moments of maybe sacred moments that are important to you or enjoyable moments, you're going to, you're trying to have fun or you're trying to relate during moments where you're trying to connect to time by yourself. Maybe you're just alone driving in a car and it's time to relax or you have an enjoying activity that you're going to do. A lot of moments where you try to enjoy something, these intrusive thoughts come in and, and try to sabotage, right? Can even be while you're working alone or you're trying to practice peace or solitude, right? So then we often have these avoidance behaviors. We avoid those kind of moments. We avoid praying. We avoid the Bible. We avoid to, uh, hanging out at that situation. We avoid those work scenarios. We avoid being alone. So now we're in a constant uh, agita, agitated, fight or flight kind of state that we're in. We're adding stress to our life. That stress feeds anxiousness. We wear ourselves out. It feeds depression. Our, our mood is low. And in a lowered mood, a lowered emotional state, we become more prone to intrusive thoughts invading. Right. So there's a lot we have to be reminded of here. And so many people, for example, they'll have uh, I've worked with many people where at work. They're meeting with someone of the opposite sex or the same sex, and they're having some kind of business interaction and an intrusive thought hits a sexual thought. And so then they withdraw. They feel afraid of themselves or even interacting. Right. So it's some kind of relational connection moment with God, with yourself or with a, another person, or it could be at work. It could be a loved one, a spouse, a friend, a stranger, someone that's standing in line, a customer. This is where intrusive thoughts hit the most and they get in the way of relational connection. So then we get up in our head and we're not present anymore and we're, we're lost in whatever the thought is. And now we're not connecting to the person in front of us. We're not connecting to God or just connecting to the peace and the space that's available to us. And it's a sign that we have to learn how to practice working through no longer being afraid of these thoughts and having new responses in how we relate to these thoughts when they show up and when they arrive. The fourth thing I want to remind you of is these thoughts often accuse. 
they often accuse you. What do I mean by this? Well, they start hitting these lines of this thought came from you. This thought says something about you. This thought means something about you. You actually want to do this or, or maybe, um, or maybe in your Christian walk, for example, you don't even really want to serve God. It kind of even goes that way. And, and, and it just starts shaming you and condemning you and firing at you. And a lot of this comes out of a faulty interpreter. We interpret these thoughts to mean something rather than continuing to move forward, letting the thought pass on by. We don't need to feed it. We don't need to argue. We don't need to debate back. You don't, you do not need to negotiate with terrorists, but we get locked in these patterns that actually need renewal. And I talk about this in the OCD healing journey in the course and training material. I want to encourage you to jump into that, get some help and support for your life, because I've had to learn how to relate to my thoughts in a new way. And I didn't necessarily get the teaching and equipping. I had to find it. And I spent years and years and years learning the hard way and navigating through a lot of goofy perspectives and things that are, are, are not helpful and some perspectives that actually made my battlegrounds worse. <laughs> and it's part of life. It's part of the learning. Where do you need to take some new steps in your journey? Because when it comes to intrusive thoughts, it's not really about making the thoughts go away because that's one of the first uh, errors we fall into. God, make this thought go away. It's not about trying to make the thoughts go away. It's about learning a new response to the thoughts. And this is going to take a journey. This isn't like a quick fix thing. This is, this is practice and practice and practice. And you have to become a gracious person to yourself in giving yourself permission that I've got to learn. Because there's a number of things that are going to need to be applied. You're going to have to first learn to see where your compulsive behavior is and starve the compulsions. And when you starve the compulsion, fear starts to rise up. Oh my goodness. What if I, what if this, what, what if, what if, what if, right? And you learn to walk through the fear without feeding the compulsive behavior. Because we're going to learn that fear is a liar. Fear is a bully but it's a very scared bully and it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but it wants to be your boss. It wants to dictate your life. So we're learning how to face our fears, walk through them and let God's perfect love cast out fear. I'm okay. God is with me as I walk through this. But meanwhile, we have to learn to fire our interpretation because we get hung up on very, very dysfunctional, distorted interpretations of our thoughts. This is a big one that I see in the questions that come in and people that I talk to, people I coach or counsel or help in any way you see and you pick up the faulty interpreter. Oh, I, I, I think I'm depressed and I have this thought and you know what? It's there because I'm not really saved to begin with. And it's like, ah, no, that's not what this means. It's not what's going on. And um, you'll need to fire your, your, your interpreter. Uh, and in that process, a lot of this has to do with the seven distortions that I teach about, about learning to accept imperfections in our life. And, and th the fact that we're weak and, and we, are, we are humans, and yes, we are divinely loved by God, and we've been, we've been given a new identity by him, but we are in a constant cycle of trying to fix and trying to uh, get every nook and cranny solved in our life without actually learning how to be loved and experience God's gracious kindness towards us and accepting uncertainty and realizing we're, we're not in control. And instead of trying to fix every doubt that passes by and trying to fix every uncertain thought that presents itself of learning to go, you know what? Uh, I accept that there's certain uh, uncertain areas of my life. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. We learn to let go of control and our control issues while practicing the beauty of total, unconditional, loving acceptance. Tula, T-U-L-A. God, you totally, unconditionally love me, accept me, and receive me right where I'm at right now. And now I can walk with you in that, and I'm going to grow, heal, mature, and overcome in relationship with you. Because OCDers are always trying to fix themselves from a distance.
Mm -mm. God wants to connect with you and in relationship is how we are changed. We're changed through his love and we're chronically trying to change ourselves to then be loved. And so instead of going, God, take these thoughts away, make these thoughts go away. I'm a big shift happened in my life. I learned to let the overcomer rise up in me instead of God, rescue me, take this away, get me out of here. I'm going to learn I'm going to learn what I'm what I need to learn to practice to face this to overcome this and I'm going to help others with what I learn. And so if you're blessed by what I'm sharing here, I want to encourage you, hey, what you learn other people need what you're facing. Many other people are going through and they need encouragement, they need instruction, they need help. So your journey can be a blessing to them. If this was video was a blessing, would you do me a favor? Click that like button, click the subscribe and share it with somebody. Say, hey, this helped me out. This helped me in what I'm struggling with. This helped make sense of some things I'm working through. Hey, maybe this could help you to let it be a blessing to their life. If it's a blessing, would you also consider supporting these videos by a one-time donation or you can become a monthly supporter? You can also get uh, copies of my books and materials. Of course, the OCD Healing Journey is available as well. There are topics you can look up. There's also a free OCD help page, marktahesus.com forward slash OCD help. It lays out the videos I've presented that are on this subject. I just want to be a blessing to your life because I'm your brother from another mother. And Lord willing in the creek don't rise, I'll be back with more insights for your healing and freedom journey. But in the meantime, I'm out.